learning of computer networks and security we are going to start with the module 5 that is multimedia networking we have now uh, some more uh, uh, concepts of RTP so here we will see RTP packet header fields so this is important RTP packet header fields. So we will see one by one. So first we will go with the diagram and then slowly we will uh, see field by field in each RTP packet. That is the header fields in the RTP packet. As I already said your RTP packets are generated here. Once the user speaks, his uh, audio messages will be converted into chunks and that chunks, whatever you have, will be uh, encapsulated or encoded first and that once encoding is done, then those chunks, whatever you have, those chunks of data, encoded chunks will be encapsulated, like header will be added, added using the RTP, uh, RTP, that is the header is added. Now RTP packet is generated, which is actually running over your UDP. Okay, so RTP is running over your UDP and then it is moved on to the UDP's hand. So UDP datagram is generated where header is again added by UDP and then it moves on to IP, IP header is added and now finally it moves to data link then physical and then it travels over the net in the network via the network it to reach the destination, right. So here you can see. Um, uh, port addresses, IP address is required to identify source and destination. So payload what you have, what is payload here? The audio chunks, whatever you have encapsulated, whatever you have embedded inside RTP. So that payload type of payload. So what is the meaning of payload type? So it can be audio message there or it can be the video message there. So that payload type indicates uh, the type of encoding that you have made. So if it is audio encoding, it can be PCM encoding technique or if it is video encoding, uh, you might have used JPEG, MPEG type of uh, encoding technique. So the type of encoding that you have made will be specified in this payload type identification. And then you have the sequence number which is inserted for every RTP packet. So what is the meaning of sequence number? So this will be very much helpful at the receiver's end. So receiver upon receiving the RTP packets, he should be able to identify which is the first packet received, which is the last packet and suppose if any in between the RTP packets are missing, those missing packets also should be identified at the receiver side with the help of sequence number. And the next very important thing that should be inserted in RTP is time stamping. So every RTP packet should have a time that is uh, inserted, the time that the RTP packet was generated. And this time will be helpful at the receiver end to overcome jitter. So we know what is jitter. So that is a delay that is added in the network due to congestion. So one, if the packet is delayed at the receiver end with the help of time stamping, that is with the help of different play out schedule at the receiver end, the jitter can be removed, right? So that is the one which we had already seen in the previous uh, concept, time stamping concept jitter concept when we had uh, uh, when we had discussed. So we had seen about this time stamping. So one small example is given here. Suppose if you are sending an audio uh, which has to be encoded at the rate of 64 kilobits per second. So here only audio you are encoding and the tech, uh, coding technique, encoding technique used for uh, you can say the encoding technique is pulse code modulation which we had already discussed what is that first audio is converted into samples and those samples will be converted into finite quantized values which we call as quantization so now the binary bits audio signals are converted into binary bits and those binaries are now transferred uh, embedded and transferred in the form of rtp rtp packet
right so that is pulse code modulation and you can see here the application collects encoded data in the form of chunks now so still here the chunks are generated which uh, uh, okay so the encoding is done and that is now uh, converted in the form of chunks there and now uh, you know before sending see you can just see here in an example every 20 milliseconds if the encoding rate is 64 kilobits per second for every 20 milliseconds 160 bytes uh, are generated so in one chunk you can have around 160 bytes so for every 20 milliseconds such a chunk which carries 160 bytes is actually generated okay so it is something like that so the such chunks has to be now transferred so now you can see all those audio chunks will be added with the rtp header and header plus chunk you call it as now complete full-fledged rtp packet okay so every chunk audio chunk that is generated now will be added with the header and now that rtp packet what you call now you can call it as a uh, packet which will be now sent to udp the below layer udp and now udp datagram will again add a header so again which you call it as encapsulation you hide the rtp packet inside udp segment or udp datagram so udp also will add an add an header so rtp header indicates the type of encoding scheme used for each packet there okay so rtp packet or header also contains sequence number and timestamp we will see that in the form of a diagram okay so then one more important thing that i already said is it doesn't uh, ensure quality of service that means end-to-end -end delivery this is running only in end-to-end -end system sender and receiver so in between in the network if the congestion occurs delay might occur that is not guaranteed by rtp and reliable data communication will never be guaranteed by rtp so tcp may provide reliable communication but rtp cannot provide any quality of service guarantee that is congestion control guarantee cannot be provided by rtp so routers also will provide its best service to give the shortest path there so routers also cannot cannot identify the rtp there because rtp is actually the application layer side routers do not have any application layer so routers will treat all the incoming datagrams as normal datagrams only because it cannot see their uh, rtp packets inside uh, ip uh, datagram that is received at the uh, routers so routers will just provide best effort service to enroute the rtp packets to reach the destination on time so i said i'll show the in the form of a diagram the rtp header this is actually the header part to which actually the encoded audio will be added in the form of a payload here okay so here you see only the header part the first part is our payload type not payload payload type type of payload payload is added to the header audio chunk is added to the header so this is only the header part so first part is type of payload like i already said the encoding scheme is used here which type of encoding scheme might be used for this audio that is specified here in the payload type so that uh, payload type can be any one of this okay you can see here the list of payload types so any one of this so it can be the pcm technique famous PCM technique, it can be GCM, GSM encoding technique, LPC encoding technique, J motion JPEG encoding technique, H.261 or MPEG video technique. So the last three indicates the video encoding technique, the first three indicates the audio encoding technique. So any one of these audio technique or video technique pay, uh, can be specified here. But remember a number is specified there. So all these encoding techniques has one unique number 0, 3, 7, 26, 31, 33. So these numbers are specified here this number is specified here okay and this actually takes up seven bits of your header okay and next comes your sequence number which is of 16 bits so sequence number as i already said it is helpful in finding the missing uh, rtp packets so next you have the timestamp field third one is the timestamp field in timestamp field so this is actually uh, uh, taking up 32 bits 32 bits timestamp field and this 32 bit timestamp field is actually used for overcoming the jitter so uh, in order to have uh, synchronization between the sender and receiver so receiver can begin his playout by fixing a playout schedule so that will be fixed based on the timestamp that is attached by the rtp uh, packet at the sender side so this timestamp is helpful there at the receiver end to overcome jitter so the next field is actually the synchronization source id which is again uh, 32 bit long 
32 bit long this is actually depicting about the source see this is not the source ip address or not the source port number so this synchronization source id is nothing but for every audio stream that is generated for every stream of rtp packets that is generated one unique id is assigned by the source so what is that a unique id is assigned for each rtp stream generated at the source in order to just identify or differentiate between multiple rtp streams so it is something like uh, at an uh, at the sender side uh, multiple audios can be sent right so uh, it is uh, the one which is uh, um, uh, useful for the source to differentiate between multiple audio streams or it is also helpful at the receiver end to differentiate between the two different audio streams okay so that id unique id is assigned there so the last one is miscellaneous field okay so the first four fields you need to know payload type sequence number timestamp and synchronization id for which actually you are adding i mean uh, for uh, this head this is nothing but the header part to which you now add this actual content content is the audio chunk which which is in the encoded encoded audio chunk you add and sent in the form of a rtp packet okay so i already explained this ssid that is synchronization source id so these are the four fields which you have so this is a concept where you are encapsulating so it is something like uh, uh, you can refine it more uh, it, this encapsulation everything happens actually at the sender side so rather than burdening the sender to do this encapsulation we can have a separate server there which can do the encapsulation technique uh, for our rtp packets so rtp packets whenever it is generated you can go to the separate server where the encapsulation can be done okay so again uh, you can also have that server to add the sequence number to those rtp packet timestamp also can be added at the server side so once everything is done then you can give to the client in order to send the rtp packet so this also can be done there in rtp